Twining Vines now has a Gmail account and you can send your questions and comments to twiningvinesradio at gmail.com T-W-I-N-I-N-G-V-I-N-E-S R-A-D-I-O at gmail.com Twining Vines Radio at gmail.com And of course we're airing all over the world on kdvs.org So how was your week to this week, Jay? This week was great, especially after my four-day retreat. So mm, yeah, from, that's what you did last, last week. week. Right, yeah, right, right. right. Yeah, we'll yeah, we missed that. you last week. Yeah. Oh, and uh, how about a, a thank you to uh, Noel, uh, the previous show. Great music. And Noel queued up uh, Erica Badu for me, Bag Lady. Thank you so much, Noel. I appreciate that. One of my favorites. Uh, yeah, so tell us a little bit about your retreat this uh, past week weekend right a four-day retreat yeah retreats are i've been doing uh, this um, meditation retreats for maybe eight years now some are small like day long some are three days five days some are ten days and i think the maximum i have done is ten days so ten days <laughs> and this last one was four days yeah last one was four days and um it was great it is uh it was not Totally silent. So there are different types of uh, retreats, right? Some are yeah. like totally silent. Uh, some are like 50-50. You are not supposed to have, uh, you know, you, there, you can have functional uh, discussions. And in s- um, some are uh, really um, steeped into learning in one particular area. Like uh, these are all Buddhist retreats. Right. Yeah. Doing. Thank you. I was just yeah, about yeah. to mention to our listeners, uh, in case you don't know, Twining Vines is uh, two Buddhists talking about whatever they darn well please. And uh, Jay had attended a four day uh, retreat last weekend and, and uh, I had uh, covered for him uh, last Friday. Yeah, thank uh, you. Give, give us an idea of the structure. Like how does a typical, typical day go when you do these retreats? There is, uh, um, you know, the first day or the first, uh, let's say a uh, seven a week long retreat sure the first two days will be the entry and uh, what is going on like wh- how does the morning begin the morning there is there will always be a some kind of body work like yoga oh nice or uh, something um, energy uh, mm-hmm, energy mm-hmm. work if you if you don't if you're not into yoga you can have your own body practice and then there will be an early morning meditation after that and then uh, breakfast and uh, the good thing about all these uh, Retreats are like the f- food is very important, you know, uh, food is very much connected to your mindset. So you, uh, we are always given um, home cooked food. And vegetarian? Vegetarian mm-hmm. home cooked food. Mm-hmm. And uh, um, so the morning starts with uh, some kind of body work and then breakfast and uh, there will be time for journaling or uh, walks in the nature. Mm-hmm. And always the retreat um happens in somewhere nice in nature like either mountains or where by was the, lake. the last one where was this uh when this this, uh, this last one that i did was actually not um uh, a complete silent meditation it mm-hmm. was actually a kind of a study meditation so okay. we were so um it was in it was a res- uh, residence in sacramento so somebody's house yeah uh-huh yeah. And uh but you were going on about a 7 day uh so it might start yeah, with some so, yoga, so some cup, food. Yeah, so so nice, couple days nice. is entry. Mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. the first 2 days you know you're coming from a, you know if you're working 9 to 5 mm-hmm. on 5 days a week you mm-hmm. ha- and then you have a family and if you have kids or you have a family and the and then you have all these things going on friends and politics and you're on TV and Facebook all the time <laughs> so your mind is cluttered, <laughs> scattered. <right? laughs> and then you're taking all that away for uh, your intention is to retreat from that right right and at least get respite yeah so yeah. the initial day is actually not easy mm. it, uh, you always have the tendency to look for that phone in uh-huh. your pocket yeah i know that <laughs> feeling uh-huh. i think we all do actually yeah and then you cannot do that because y- you're not supposed to bring the phone <laughs> and then no computer no book and uh, no so books. yeah so oh. what we end up doing is reading something like uh, there will be a tea so you'll be <laughs> <laughs> tea and coffee bar. Yeah, so we'll yeah. read the what tea is that, and that's <laughs> because this, this shows the addiction of sure. our addiction to look for a material to read. Yes, I, I get that totally. I've I've been there where where you're reading every little thing you can. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. So so the first couple of days is entry, and in entry is uh, slowly, and then by third day you are, if it is a silent retreat, you are mm-hmm. completely silent, and then there will be a going deep day. 
mm-hmm. maybe mm-hmm. fourth and fifth day will be really deep day where there will be less most of these days there will be a teacher there will be lead teacher so there'll be some lectures some lectures uh-huh. and in the going deep days there may not be a real lecture okay so that means you're meditating for long periods of long time long periods of time and yeah. in between what are you doing you're not sitting for more than an hour probably at a time no uh-huh. you, you it can be 20 minute to 40 minute okay. and then a 10 minute break okay uh is there ever uh so in the soto zen you've heard kin hin the japanese term for walking meditation mm-hmm. is is there something like kin yeah uh-huh. so um Um, it, the schedule is actually not not very strict you mm-hmm. it is um, you can skip a meditation a uh, session in the hall and do your own walking meditation okay. outside and come uh, after the break for okay. the next one and there will be lo- two hour or even sometimes three hour lunch break mm mm-hmm. mm-hmm. three hour lunch yeah break. Three, oh, sometimes that's luxurious yeah. yeah so you can have an app also okay and um, or do some more yoga or something like that yeah mm-hmm. Do they do any kind of work? Uh oftentimes at uh in our Soto Zen retreats we might go outside and sweep the walk or rake the yard. Um Yeah, mo- because of, because <laughs> the food on, wax off. <laughs> because we are not actually getting food from outside. There uh-huh. is a lot of work to be done for breakfast, lunch and and uh, dinner. So there is washing. Okay, cleaning, so you, there washing, there are washing. the chores which are typical yeah, where yeah, the yeah. somebody's cooking. Uh yeah, yeah. we call it the tenzo. Yeah. yeah uh, Oh, I hope I got that right. Yeah, Tenzo, uh, the the cook uh, in, in during our retreats, uh, and then also somebody is doing the cleaning. Now yeah. that often means that people might be uh, meditating while other people are doing chores and stuff, mm-hmm. and I think that's yeah. Just what so you, you said. if yeah. you if your team is like a ten people, then you sign up for you know different chores, and then um, if, if sometimes the team is more than ten or fifteen, then we actually hire a chef. and we're talking about even uh at least in in my example and I think yours as well where when we're doing these things like maybe we're going outside and raking or we're washing the dishes we're doing it in silence uh typically mm-hmm. we might ask for a few instruction we tend to keep fairly quiet the yeah, whole time yeah. if if not not talk at all mm-hmm. uh and it, it how would you find it after say the third or fourth day how do you find your mind and body feeling yeah it is uh, i don't know how to explain it is mm-hmm. like you can you see yourself your being is different mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and every after every re- retreat of at least 5 5 days you come out as a different person different in the sense you get a opportunity like if you want to make some habit changes mm-hmm. um that is the opportunity because c- once you come out of a retreat you have a very clear and fresh mind and you have very less temptations to do go to the old way And do you think it sticks fairly well for you? It uh, it's up to you. Yeah. You you have the power once sure. you once you're out. Um so uh, usually what I do is if it is a four day retreat, I start my own retreat a day before. Mm-hmm. And then I continue after. So four day uh, continue after that for another one day. So mm-hmm. it be- four day becomes a six day. Right. A seven day becomes a 10 day. And I can actually sometimes wow. I can start before uh you know, it can be two days before and two days after. So every time you come out you have an opportunity you are empowered. Right. You are empowered to take control of your mind and then you can let go that thing that you want to. Yeah. And it's it's up to you. It is some people do that some don't. Right. And to uh just illustrate how important this kind of thing is to us, uh we're both um uh, working. We Jay mm-hmm. and I actually we've we've said before on the show that we work together. uh i work a very early shift and jay works a slightly later shift and uh, you know we're working 5 days a week and so we have to take vacation which means uh we're burning some of our allotted vacation that we're accruing uh so there's you know that sacrifice we're not traveling we're well we might be traveling to get to the uh the retreat center but otherwise uh this is so important to us it's it's a uh, in a way a spiritual vacation and and I think I find and and I'm sure you would agree that these are some of the best vacations we've ever yeah, had yeah this is a vacation some of the vacation like I have a vacation plan to India next uh, in in January and I'm sure while I, when I come back I will need a vacation you, from you that. you will need a retreat yeah. afterward <laughs> it'll be very stressful all of the travel i mean it's it's exciting it's fun uh those those of you who travel i think you'll agree uh but it can be very uh difficult very stressful sometimes yeah i it, would i would add uh, for the listeners um some more thing like it it is very imp- important who do you 
do the retreats with you know mm-hmm. so yeah. i have been blessed to have a friend circle who is interested uh, in this kind of things and i had been doing retreats with the same group of people for 8 years so it is like a family and also the teacher who is the lead you know you right. should if you have a connection with that person yeah very important it's very important mm-hmm. it is like a family reunion mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, for a different purpose um so the teacher is very important and uh, what else the subjects you right. know the, what the teacher is actually so if you are with a team and a teacher for few years you have some kind of convergence or you have similar interests or similar subjects so what else is that full oh yeah some some are like full full silent like 100% percent silent some right, are, some, right. some are like functional silence yeah uh, in all instances i think even when you're you're saying full silence we know that that is violated I, I, there are times where people just have to kind of uh whisper something to somebody uh, to, it, to give it, them directions in full or, silent retreats people if they have to do something they have to actually write and they write it out hey that's, and that's then, a pretty good and idea and then actually, if yeah. if it is not like if it is emergency they have to take the person out of that that campus okay. and then talk so uh, my experience is and and this is even uh perhaps uh, arguably a more uh disciplined uh, uh tradition that i that i attend is uh primarily soto zen uh retreats uh it the silence is violated continuously it 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 you know you can allow it to frustrate you i mm-hmm. think a, as i've said before it's up to you whether you um just let it pass in and out of your of your mind and body or you allow it to to settle there and and get a grip on you i primarily just uh chalk it up to these people are in on a different level and a different you know um learning experience and and it's you know nothing against them uh but uh unfortunately we have a lot of talky talky talks uh at our retreats it's uh sometimes uh distracting Uh I'm about to uh, attend a retreat uh, let's see it's a week from Friday we have Rohatsu Sashin uh that is uh uh to s- in celebration of Buddha's enlightenment we do it every year that is year. that, that is that I, in, in fact we'll um get to the Sacramento Dharma Center uh and the and the uh Buddhist uh, events calendar in just a moment but that is uh at the Sacramento Dharma Center now that one is a uh, uh fairly closed uh already kind of full i i would say if you're familiar with soto zen uh give a call over to the sacramento dharma center and discuss it with them if not uh realize that this is a a fairly uh formal uh fundamental uh buddhist event uh i i'm not trying to discourage people f- from expressing interest but uh do give a call and make sure that it's something for you uh but that's yeah so I'll there are like different types of yes. uh, um uh, retreats right something i right? was going to ask you what is the discipline of, of a yeah. couple that you've been in yeah i'm mostly um i usually attend two types one is secular where mm-hmm. there is no form no rituals or an, mm-hmm. anything and then also tibetan right um so tibetan buddhism buddhist retreats have its own form its own um you know there will be mantra recitations yes. and rituals and all the stuff and then zen has its own different form yes. and then vipassana we pretend the 10 day vipassana retreats are very famous mm-hmm. uh they, they have their own form and then there are um um kind of retreats and workshops like deep study uh, sure. secular yeah. uh, buddhist retreats too which are also uh i like the uh study uh, i have to admit i uh definitely slant toward uh you know doing reading and research and uh so much of of the retreats that i go to were were forbidden we're discouraged from reading mm-hmm. from bringing our phones uh some people bring notepads but they're asked not to take Dead notes notes and they yeah. do anyway uh, you know whatever uh but uh it, that you know whether i don't know that it's the the point i think the point is not to to be enjoying it so much as as just testing it out seeing how uh at the end or even in the middle if there's any moments where uh there's some clarity or some insight uh i think there always is uh and it's not always pleasant would you agree some yeah, of some it, of these insights dip- can be kind of hard oh yeah yeah i i've i've been brought to tears sitting there in meditation it, it's inexplicable <laughs> yeah and it's highly discouraged <laughs> you know tradition yeah pain painful doesn't mean bad right you know it, it some some of these re, uh, realizations can be very painful but at the same time it is empowering you also yeah. it it's all about you know you are seeing your mind opportunity to see your mind and then it's up to you to do what it what you want to do with right. it right yeah uh before we get too deep into this uh we're almost halfway through uh shall we get to the events calendar mm-hmm. really quickly i'll read through this quickly folks not a lot of changes uh i might have a few extra things 
uh, downtown Davis, Shambhala. They have uh, meditation every weekday. Uh, that I think may actually be... Uh, nope, that's every weekday apparently, uh, 7 a.m. And uh, I recall reading that they also have uh, a breakfast afterward. I'm not too sure what that that's about, but you know, if you want to go check out uh, Davis Shambhala Center uh, online and take a look at their calendar, uh, you'll notice uh, 7 a.m. meditations. I have to say I highly endorse morning meditation. How do you feel about morning meditation, Jay? I'm not a morning you're, person. You're not a morning person, and I am, as you're aware. I'm maybe in the mornings. I'm actually in the deepest meditation. That is deep sleep. <laughs> yeah, then yeah, that's fine too. Uh, uh, also here in Davis, I wouldn't have, say that's a meditation. <laughs> in meditation, no. you should be aware of what you're doing. Well, it's all meditation, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, also here in in Davis is uh, Diamond Way hosts uh, open meditation Mondays uh, through Thursdays at 8 30 p.m so that's in the evenings uh that's kind of late for me i'd be snoozing i think uh in sacramento at the night sa- meditation is my favorite yeah, so the, you, the later would be good for you the later okay. is the better yeah rather than turning on uh, netflix you're you're off meditating yeah. that's awesome uh in sacramento the sacramento dharma center is valley streams zen sangha hosts meditation services on monday nights at uh 7 p.m and it ends at 8 45 p.m loosely uh, on Thursday mornings, uh, they have meditation and services at 6 a.m. I'm typically in in attendance at 6 a.m. on Thursday mornings uh, at the Sacramento Dharma Center as well. Uh, Sacramento Insight Meditation, uh, SIM, hosts meditation on Thursday nights at 7 p.m. SIM hosts a 12-step recovery group on Mondays from 6.30 to 8 p.m. SIM also holds a young person sangha, which meets on Tuesdays at 7 p.m. Also at the Sacramento Dharma Center, the Sacramento Buddhist Meditation Group, or SBMG, hosts People of Color Sangha at 4.15 p.m. on Sundays. Meditation and talks on Sundays from 6.30 to 8.30 p.m. And Refuge Recovery Workshops, this is a, a, another 12-step program workshop, uh, on Thursdays at 6 p.m. And, and by the way, uh, if anybody out there is not familiar with the 12 steps, the traditional 12 steps of recovery, uh, Alcoholics Anonymous or uh, Narcotics Anonymous, includes meditation. And uh, Alcoholics Anonymous was founded, if I'm not mistaken, in 1936 or 7 or something like that. And they were meditating back then, as were Quakers and, and other, of course, Buddhists have been meditating for thousands of years, folks. Uh, and at the Sacramento Dharma Center, at various times and days, the Climate Sangha meets to explore our hopes and fears about climate change in the Dharma, in the context of the Dharma. And please check the calendar for the Sacramento Dharma Center Climate Sangha because they meet at various times of the week and it changes from week to week. I believe they don't. No, have a it's a, it's time. always. Um, first sunday of the month oh thank you okay yeah. now maybe i'll actually make it to yeah. one of those um and i think the next one others? is uh, i think the next one is december one yeah number okay. uh, number is native american heritage month and it's a time to to celebrate and contemplate the rich and diverse cultures tradition and histories and to acknowledge the important contributions of native people and uh, um uh, one of the announcements i have is all voices choral project avcp presents listen to her story missing and murdered indigenous women at uh, the this program is at westminster presbyterian church at 1300 n street sacramento folks that's right across from the Capitol on 13th and n it's at 7 p.m on saturday november 23rd that is tomorrow and this uh, what time you, again 7 p.m. tomorrow. 7 p.m.? Maybe I can make it. Yeah. This event is actually intended intended to bring awareness of the crisis of uh, missing and murdered indigenous women, specifically here in greater Sacramento area. Can you believe that? Wow. <laughs> in which there are about 13 cases. Um, and uh, yeah. in that uh, synopsis, I read that there are more uh, murdered and missing uh, Native American women in California than any other state in the nation. Yeah, they're seven times more likely than non-natives to be victims of serial hom- homicide, according to national data set on serial killings. And uh, indigenous women are disproportionately affected by all forms of violence, with 84% experiencing violence and the 84% experiencing 
violence in their lifetime it this is uh, you know a couple of years back Incredible. i saw some movies on this subject and i was um uh, but was we didn't know for one thing we had no idea so i had i'm in this country for right 20 now. years <laughs> and i did not know yeah. until 2017 that this is the i thought law treats everybody equally yeah. but there are like uh, things like if if a native american woman goes missing um it's not as important as uh, you don't have to take uh, a police case or anything like that i think there is some there was a movie i, I think the name of that movie was wind river or something mm. yeah after that, that after up. after seeing that movie and reading about that i was unable to like just forget it it is mm-hmm. like uh, i don't know even what to say why is this kind of things happening why is yeah. tv is talking yeah. only about the president all the time <laughs> you know well it is uh, uh there are a lot of things going on there yeah, is there's a lot of other things going on yeah. uh, uh, well and and uh say moving right along I, one of the other uh things i'd like to mention is watching um i think it was uh hmm, viewfinder on or yeah i think that's it on pbs i i'm sorry that i don't recall the exact uh title i think it is a series called viewfinder and they were talking about the koi of the uh anderson marsh this is an area uh pretty cl- well it's close to the Anderson Valley some of you know where this is kind of near Clear Lake uh Calistoga area uh and they're trying to get back some land there uh they were in cr- an incredible culture for something like 13,000 years it's an incredible story the the uh, natives there are the Koi K O I uh and their uh traditions and their uh culture are incredible they were one of the wealthiest native american tribes anywhere in the nation and uh they made uh peace with so many different tribes because they were uh great traders they uh manufactured beads and other uh worthy worthwhile items uh they had uh, almost unlimited supply of uh, uh wasn't flint obsidian and they were able to uh chip and create uh sharp points of uh, you know that were knives and so forth utilized by uh, other native american tribes so they were a very wealthy and successful tribe for something like 13,000 years they had an island uh i i think it was uh, i think clear lake is a natural lake if i'm not mistaken and uh the island that they lived on uh they had to abandon it briefly uh for reasons that uh i i uh, forgotten uh and when they tried to come back onto the island it had been um settled by by european settlers uh so that was an interesting um you know learning point for me on uh, watching pbs and just kind of uh, skipping around on on the um uh, on the television and then also i wanted to uh, mention quickly on prime yes i am a, a prime clone i um am a prime member uh, i've sold out and and it is true it's it's so convenient and this mega mega corporation is uh getting you know they're making some great deals for me i suppose but i'm spending an awful lot of money but the other thing i did was i i try to choose wisely in watching uh some of the movies that they offer and this documentary uh narrated and produced by jeff bridges a uh, Soto Zen practitioner uh by the way is, is, is Zen practitioner he, he is wow. and uh you know if your mic starts uh sounding like that give it a little whack give it a little dope slap uh okay. I, I heard those guys on uh, in the meantime having trouble with that mic uh so Jeff Bridges produced uh Living in the Future's Past and uh it's a sobering uh you know psychological uh well it, it's ho- it's uh visited by many psychologists and neurologists talking about our natures about uh energy especially and how important it is to our success as a species uh meaning you know not just uh fossil fuels it, it began with uh we found fire uh you know because we're such an adaptive species we we were able to use fire to our advantage and then of course later when we had plentiful uh, uh energy from from uh, fossil fuels then then we really took off and uh you know it's when you watch all of these things about our uh environment and and uh global climate change it can be very discouraging i admit i was uh all week long i've been a little bit you know bummed out uh let's just say i was in a depressive state after uh watching that and some other uh documentaries and and i usually watch nhk and they had uh a little thing about the fires in australia folks australia is on fire uh they showed a clip where uh the uh the uh koala bears were <laughs> i can't even hardly say it uh were were trying to get it from the f- get away from the fire and and they they couldn't it was horrific uh so uh you know australia's on fire folks uh it, the whole darn continent 
uh, is burning everywhere. Uh, climate change, I don't know what to say. I don't know if we're going to make it. I, you know, who knows? But what I will say is at the very end of Living in the Future's Past, Jeff Bridges says something very utilitarian. He says, uh, you know, whatever you're doing now, what can you change in addition to do, what you're already doing? What one thing can you change? Uh, and, I, you know, that might help. And I thought, well, the one thing I could do is I could use less paper towels because I'm pretty mindless when I go into, say, a men's room and I start yanking one, two, three, four paper towels. Don't ask me why. Four? Who needs four? I wash my hands and I yank four paper towels out of the dispenser. Uh, so I vow to um, use half at, at the very least. And I'd like to use less plastic for sure. Um, but uh, what else, Jay? What else should we talk about in the last yeah, couple I'm of minutes? I'm still going through that material about that event tomorrow. So I just have... Uh, did you know that California tops one of the top 10 states to have the most missing murdered indigenous women and you know a quarter of that is in sacramento a quarter of of the most is in sacramento, <laughs> it's in sacramento. you know i oh. we i haven't heard this on the news have you uh i mean is this like this is, is according to uihi.org yeah not not kcra or or fox no, or, no. or uh, Th- that yeah, is that KQ, is why <laughs> not even pbs uh, yeah, and tomorrow's program, they have musicians and also very good guest speakers. Shelley Coward, Nevada City Rancheria Tribal Council Secretary, and uh, Mariana Moscoso, uh, the Decolonization Project founder. Have you heard about Decolonization Project? It is uh, following the Standing Rock, the Decolonization Project. They aim to deprogram the colonial mindset. This is something that I had been... Uh, I know about um, not exactly this decolonization, but how I come. I also come from a c- country that was colonized by um, the for six, f- by the British mm-hmm. and and by um, the um, other pe- um, mm-hmm. um, foreigners for six hundred years did, before did that. Genghis Khan uh, come all the way down into India. And then, yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. So um, decolonization is the unlearning of the dominant values of the oppressor you know there are and of uh, co- mainly capitalism and colonialism so there are some dominant values and mm-hmm. unlearning that uh, and giving you again it's kind of another retreat um sure uh, giving a fresh mind to see um to value or evaluate um the mindset these normalized values of individualism ownership of land uh, the when when the britishers came to india mm-hmm. they they were you know welcomed um just like uh, we welcomed all religions sure, in, in sure. india yeah. Yeah, the n- nation of india and uh, there was no concept of land ownership at that time mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and then this concept of uh, uh, like they building, will co- building fences yeah they will come with a paper land. And have the uh, landlord mm-hmm. sign on it, and then all of a sudden, it is mine. Sounds familiar. <laughs> Sounds like the Europeans in in America as well. And and we're kind of running out of time. So I I wanted to uh, remind our listeners because it's been a while since we've talked about Jay. Where are you from? Where from? Where do you hail? I'm from India, the southern state of India, Kerala. Kerala, and I'm from Sacramento, California. And and uh, part of we hope the magic of this show is our very diverse origins that uh, yes. Jay and I have, and, and we've come together in, the, in our profession and in our meditation and uh, found, found a, a real connection. Uh, yeah, I, I migrated here 20 years back, and I have actually lived in 25 cities all over the world. So, and uh, uh, quite a few in America as well. Yeah. yeah. And I have not. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty much a provincial uh, Sacramentan. Uh, yeah, so uh, you know what? Jimmy just walked in, and, and we're about a minute and a half before the end of the show, and I think we'll try not to end late today. So I'll uh, key up some music. Jay, why don't you just entertain us with, uh, why don't you sing for us or something like that, huh? Am I putting you on the spot? There you go. You could chant a mantra. <laughs> is, is that Star Trek? <laughs> La 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 la. Let's see what we got here. Mm-hmm. Keep going. La 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 la. Ooh. Folks, that was Jay. I won't give his last name, but uh, he that was <laughs> that was nice. Thank you so much. Okay, so we're gonna kind of go out, and we want to uh, thank everyone. Uh, Noel, thank you for helping us out, running our uh, public service announcements. Uh, folks, wait around. Uh, thank you. Jimmy Smiles is next for the Smile Show. Ooh.